All right, we're now going to explore uh, quadratic functions, which um, is a function of the form y equal ax squared plus bx plus c. This is a two-variable equation with xy, x comma y, or ordered pair solutions. Now, we've previously graphed linear functions, uh, which is y equal mx plus b. Um, to name the slope-intercept form. And the graphs of those are straight lines. But what's going to happen when the degree of the polynomial is 2? So quadratic function has two variables. Uh, y is isolated in the standard or general form. And it's equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Now we're going to do something very old-fashioned. We're going to graph a specific quadratic function by creating a table of values. Now remember, when you create a table of values, you choose numbers for x, and then you calculate the y values. So I have x in the first column, y in the second column. Now I know things about this particular function, so I am choosing specific x values starting with 0 because I already know what this thing is going to look like. So I'm cheating just a little tiny bit. All right. Now, when we plug in 0 for x, we get 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 4, which is equal to 4. When we plug in y, we get 1 squared, excuse me, when we plug in 1 for x, we get 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 4, which is negative 1. When we plug in 2 for x, we get 2 squared minus 6 times 2 plus 4, which is negative 4. When we plug in 3 for x, we get 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 4, which is negative 5. When we plug in 4 for x, we get 4 squared minus 6 times 4 plus 4, which is equal to negative 4. When we plug in 5 for x, we get 5 squared minus 6 times 5 plus 4, which is equal to negative 1. And then we plug in 6 for x, and we get positive 4. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but we started with a 4, and we got a 4 back. We, then we went to negative 1 for the y value, and you'll notice that this is also a negative 1. This negative 4 is the same as this negative 4, and then right in the middle, we have this negative 5. So there's something interesting going on here. We're getting repeated y values. We're going to plot these points. 0 comma 4 means x is 0, so I stay in the middle, and I go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, and I put a dot. When x is 1, y is negative 1. So I got that one, I got that one. When x is 2, y is negative 4. When x is 3, y is negative 5. When x is 4, y, 1, 2, 3, 4, y is negative 4 again. When x is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, y is negative 1 again. And when x is 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, y is 4 again. I'm going to attempt to connect these. Uh, it probably won't be pretty. That's not too bad. So I have this shape, and notice it does continue 
upward forever. Now we're going to write down what we know about this shape. So we're going to label some things on the graph. The first thing we're going to label is this point at the very bottom, the point at which the curve sort of turns around, has a special name. It's called the vertex. And its coordinates in this problem are 3, negative 5. Because it's a low point, we call it a minimum. So we say the minimum is negative 5, or the minimum is y equal negative 5. Notice when we describe the minimum, we don't say anything about the x value. All right, well, this particular graph touches the x-axis two times. Those are called x-intercepts. They're also called zeros. They're also called roots. So those two points have three different acceptable names. You can also call them solutions of a quadratic equation. So really four. Notice that my graph crosses the y-axis at four. That point is known as the y-intercept and it is equal to 4 for this particular graph, and it's no coincidence that that number on the end of the original function is a 4. Let's see what else. Do you notice that how we got the matching numbers on either side of the vertex? That's what's creating the symmetry in this graph. The two branches are symmetric across a line. Think of that line as like a mirror. And that line has a special name. It's called the axis of symmetry. It's not really there. And it is vertical. So its equation is x equal the x coordinate of the vertex. Okay, so the axis of symmetry is the line x equal 3, and it is invisible. All right, what else do we know about this? Let's talk about some things that we learned last semester. Domain. Domain is the set of x values that can be plugged into the function. And for this particular function, there is no need to eliminate any x values at all. So the domain is all real numbers. So basically this graph spreads out to the left and to the right forever and ever. Another way to say all real numbers is to write the interval negative infinity to infinity. You can also use inequality notation. Negative infinity is less than x is less than infinity. So you might remember that when we had the arrows last semester that we knew there was an infinity in our answer. The range is the set of y values produced by the function. In this case, all our y values are from negative 5 and upward. So we can say bracket negative 5 comma infinity close parenthesis. That's um, interval notation. We can say negative 5 is less than or equal to y is less than infinity. And we can also say y is greater than or equal to negative 5. Those are all different representations for the domain and for the range. Uh, there's one last fact about this graph. It opens upward. So let's write that up here. The branches open upward. As this thing goes higher and higher, the branches get further and further apart. Open upward. That's because a, the leading coefficient, is greater than 0. To remind you, a is the number in front of x squared, which in this case is positive invisible 1. All right, now what we're going to do to practice is I am going to draw
or I've already drawn a couple of graphs and we're going to write down some facts about these graphs. So first of all, this particular graph opens downward. Opens downward. And since when the graph opened upward in our first example, we said A was greater than zero. If a graph opens downward, we know that A must have been less than zero or negative. Uh, we can also see that we have two zeros or roots or x-intercepts or solutions. So we'll just call them zeros. Uh, those are the points on the x-axis. We have a vertex that looks to be located at 1, 2, 3, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, would you call that vertex a low point or a high point? This example had a vertex at a low point, and that was called a minimum. However, this vertex is at a high point, so we say that we have a maximum at y equal 4. Let's see what else. Oh, we have symmetry on either side of this invisible vertical line. And that invisible vertical line is called the axis of symmetry. Vertical lines have x equal equations, and the x value right here is positive 3 which of course is the x-coordinate of the vertex. Okay, so I think all we have left to do... Oh, there is a y-intercept somewhere down here somewhere, but we, we can't see it on this graph, y-intercept. But of course it will have one because remember, these two red branches spread further and further apart as the graph continues. Okay, domain. There are no restrictions on what numbers you can plug in for x, so the domain is all real numbers. The range, well, there's a maximum, which means this thing heads downward forever from that maximum. So let's see, how do I want to write that? I think I'm going to use interval notation. So the smallest range element would be negative infinity, which is really a direction, not a number. And the largest y value is 4 because that's the maximum. So I'm going to write my range in interval notation. Okay, good job. Now we're going to do the same thing for this next example. So I'm going to start with the vertex. The vertex appears to be at negative 1, negative 4. It opens upward, which implies that the leading coefficient must have been greater than zero or positive. It has two zeros. I don't quite know what they are. I can see their general location, but they don't appear to be integers. There is a y-intercept. It appears to be negative 3, but I don't know that for sure. Oh, the vertex. Since the vertex is the bottom of the graph, this particular graph has a minimum at y equal negative 4. And I forgot my negative on my 4 right there. So there's a minimum at y equal negative 4. Oh, the axis of symmetry runs straight through the vertex. So the axis of symmetry here, we'll call it the axis of sim, is x equal negative 1 because that's the x-coordinate of the vertex. All right, last domain is easy. It's all real numbers. This thing gets wider and wider forever. And the range 
I'll answer this one differently. I'll say y is greater than or equal to the minimum, which is negative 4. And that implies that the graph goes upward forever. And let's see, did I consider everything? Zeros, vertex, y-intercept. Yeah. Awesome. Um... All right, I think we're going to end this video right here. This video was about the basic facts of the quadratic function. Now, in practice, we would probably use a graphing calculator to draw the graph, to generate the table, to find special points of interest. But always remember that you can always plug in numbers for x, find numbers for y, plot ordered pairs, and connect them with a smooth curve. Um, if you need to graph something. Thank you for watching.